in this video we are going to talk about microcephaly microcephaly is a neurodevelopmental disorder where the size and the circumference of the head of a child is significantly smaller in comparison to a children of same age and same sex there could be microcephaly where the brain is like smaller and the overall head circumference is three standard deviation apart compared to a normal baby and there are cases of severe microcephaly in this video we are going to talk about the clinical presentation of microcephaly subtypes of microcephaly the causes behind microcephaly both environmental and the genetic causes and lastly we are going to focus on the latest research on microcephaly so microcephaly is associated with many symptoms like backward sloping forehead small head size dwarfism overall short stretcher increased risk of seizures delay in speech and movement facial distortion and many other symptoms now microcephaly can be divided into two categories one is primary microce microcephaly where the defects are observed during the development of the fetus inside the mo mother's uh, womb and in case of secondary microcephaly the symptoms occur postnatally that means after the birth and it occurs in a progressive fashion it leads to a progressive degeneration and reduction in the head size now when it comes to the cause of microcephaly there could be genetic as well as environmental factors involved in microcephaly progression now let us talk about the genetic factors first and then we talk about the environmental factors so high throughput sequencing data has characterized several mutations which are associated with microcephaly and many of these mutations abrogate different cell uh, cellular pathways 25 genetic loci has been associated with primary microcephaly and all of these loci are known as mcph1 mcph2 till mcph25 and the genes that are present in this loci they are involved in cell division centriole biogenesis cilia biogenesis dna damage response all of these kind of biological processes taken together all of them are involved in kinetics of cell division and cell growth question is how these processes are related to microcephaly and how they are underlying cause so let's explore that part the smaller brain size of a microcephaly patient arises due to abrogation of cellular and molecular architecture while neurogenesis is happening neurogenesis is a process when neurons are born in the cell from the stem cells so this is a cross section of a microcephaly patient and overall we can understand that aspects of neurogenesis is dysregulated so that's why we have to understand neurogenesis in bit more details so these green cells are radial glial stem cells which kind of divides among each other and they give rise to uh, more radial glial cells and this is called symmetric division also they can give rise to newborn neurons so first they can divide in a symmetric fashion giving rise to two radial glia alternatively there are also possibility that they can divide asymmetrically and give rise to a neuron and a radial glia so generally in brain what happens is these stem cells first direct directly doesn't produce neurons they first increase their numbers and divide in a proliferative fashion so they divide initially symmetrically and this process is known as transit amplification that means they increase the number of stem cells once there is a certain threshold is reached then these stem cells start differentiating into the neurons in microcephaly this normal procedure is abrogated so what happens in microcephaly is the neurons are produced prematurely the transit amplification process is not really happening or defective so let me tell you in a layman's term let's say you have a bunch of cash so in order to like thrive you should first invest that cash grow that money and then start spending that money right then you would not run out of money very soon brain does the same brain increases the number of stem cells and then leverage themselves to produce neurons in contrast microcephaly patients shows 
that instantly all the stem cell pool is differentiating into neurons instead of amplifying themselves that's that means the stem cell pool is exhausted quickly as if you are spending without amplifying your money or investing into some places so soon very soon you would be running out of money and that's what ha happens in the brain as well brain runs out of stem cell which can give rise to neurons so initially they start producing neuron very quickly but in the long term it's harmful for them because they run out of cells that can produce neuron they end up getting less neurons and that's why in microcephaly patient we can see there, there is a uh, reduction in cortical thickness overall we can understand for a cell division to occur there are several aspects molecular and cellular aspects are important so one of that aspect is centriole biogenesis and function of the centriole and that is super important in context of cell division since these stem cells are highly dividing for them as well centriolar regulation is really really important and majority of the microcephaly associated genes are involved in cell cycle re related processes such as centriole biogenesis mitotic spindle organization cell cycle checkpoint let us look at this part in bit more details so centriole biogenesis is a complicated process it involves cellular and molecular players so first of all kif 14 map 11 cnpe aspm several proteins are associated with the microtubular dynamics and spindle assembly and all of these proteins that i've mentioned right now are actually associated with microcephaly and in patients of microcephaly these genes are actually mutated one important regulator of pericentriolar matrix is cdk5 rap2 and that is found to be mutated in mcph patients other regulators such as WDR62, CEP63, CEP152 and CEP192 are all protein scaffolds in centriolar biogenesis pathway. That means if there is a mutation in these genes, there could be abrogation in the centriolar biogenesis process. And that had led to conditions like microcephaly. There are other proteins such as CNPJs, CEP135, CEP100 these are all factors that help in centriole elongation so various aspect of centriole is super important because any of these aspects are abrogated it leads to or increase the risk of developing microcephaly now let's move on to understand how researchers know so much about microcephaly so they knew about microcephaly or the cellular processes or mechanisms that underlies microcephaly is based on creating mouse mutations into those same genes or microcephaly risk genes and then they analyze the uh, newborn pups but uh, question is even if scientists can ask what aspect of neuronal development has gone wrong these are kind of mice models and they are really far from human Many aspects of microcephaly are actually shown to be not recapitulated in mouse model of microcephaly. That's why scientists required a human based model to understand the mechanisms underlying microcephaly. And that revolution comes in 2013 when Dr. Madeline Lancaster of MRC Lab Cambridge has developed a protocol known as cerebral organoids. They are also known as mini brains. Here, using uh, stem cells or induced pluripotent stem cells she can generate a mini brain like structure in a bioreactor and these small organoids or mini brains are kind of similar to the cellular and molecular organization of an adult human brain or a developing human brain but there are certain differences between them as well but the basics are pretty similar growing cerebral organoids from microcephaly patients have revolutionized Underst revolutionized the understanding of this particular disease so theoretically you can ideally take skin cells from a microcephaly patient and from a normal baby and you can make induced pluripotent stem cell out of that from that we can use organoid protocol to understand various aspects of the brain development and ask the question what has gone wrong in case of microcephaly patients so these are really important questions so a researcher can ask what aspects of neural development has gone wrong. He can also ask what are the cellular and molecular mechanism behind it. An organoid plays a crucial role in terms of understanding these scientific questions. One of the finding that they had 
is there is a reduced cortical thickness that is kind of recapitulated in these organoids. The organoids also look fairly small. Anyway, when uh, these researchers knocked down CDK5 RAP2, which I have earlier mentioned is a key player in centriolar organization or pericentriolar matrix organization, that leads to severe defects. They have also collected skin samples from patients which has a mutation in this gene and then they build organoid out of it. What they found out was really striking. They found out that in this mutant background, there is a premature differentiation which is going on. That means the neurons, the, the neurons are born or differentiated really early and stem cell pool amplification is not really happening. And that is one of the key mechanism uh, which can explain why the brain size is smaller. And that's how organoid technology allowed researcher to understand what really goes wrong in a microcephaly brain. Now you might be remembering 2015 because in this year there was a outbreak of Zika virus in Brazil. And in the same year there are several incidents of babies which are having like very small brain circumference a characteristic feature of microcephaly. Question is how Zika virus infection is associated with microcephaly. Researchers has found out that Zika virus affect these radial glial stem cells and many of the time they kill the stem cells and that's why too many uh, neurons cannot be produced in these brains and that's how brain development is severely screwed up. Not only Zika virus, there are other environmental risk factors such as rubella, toxoplasma, cytomegalovirus, all of that can increase the risk of developing microcephaly if a pregnant woman is infected by these viruses. Other than these viral factors, there could be alcohol, medications, toxic chemical exposure, all of these can increase the risk of microcephaly development. Now, let me tell you a cool hypothesis about the theory of evolution. Microcephaly actually brings out an important aspect behind it. People thought that all these microcephaly associated genes are positively selected during the course of evolution. When we are developing from a hominin ancestor and becoming homo sapiens in this process somewhere, these genes are positively selected and these genes might have really helped our brain to grow in size and mature. And that kind of also correlates with the brain size. And what scientists think is really cool, but experimental evidences are lacking. They think these microcephaly patients actually recapitulate the hominin ancestor brain morphology. That means it's an example of atavism or a reversing of a particular trait during the course of evolution. Since these microcephaly associated genes are crucially important for uh, the overall brain size or overall neuro neurogenesis, that's why scientists speculate that possibly this mutation has led to a similar morphology like a hominin ancestor, which is quite different from us. This is pretty cool, isn't it? Let me know in the comment. Now. Even if we understand some aspects of microcephaly, the risk factors, etc., there is no treatment for microcephaly. Life expectancy of that baby with microcephaly is really low. Also, there are a lot of intellectual disabilities. Sometimes there are motor defects and many other aspects. So in this video, we looked at what is microcephaly, what are the clinical features of microcephaly, what are the types of microcephaly, causes of microcephaly, a quick evolutionary aspect or insight into microcephaly and the atavism hypothesis we have explored. Lastly, we talked about there is no treatment of microcephaly exists so far. So I hope this was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And you can get a lot of flashcards notes in my facebook page check out my facebook page link is in the description don't forget to like share and subscribe support me on patreon you can follow me on an academy using my code ap10 you can get a 10 percent discount on my courses thank you see you in next video